Let me also ask you now about uh, GST, which is, of course, the big disappointment, uh, primarily because there's been so much negotiation that's gone in, there's been so much hope and such a long waiting period. Uh, you were quoted as saying that perhaps you will not wait this time around in the next parliament session for the Congress See, I'll, to come I'll, on board. So can we expect that despite you, the Congress's you support, you will the, push ahead? The, if you look at the history of the bill, I have repeatedly said the Congress should have legitimately claimed the original authorship. Mm -hmm. Today, but for this 1% uh, additional tax on interstate uh, movement, my bill is identical to what Congress had introduced. Two eminent finance ministers of the Congress party had uh, 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 approved it. Standing committee approved it. The select committee of Rajya Sabha approved it. Every political party in parliament except the Congress is openly supporting mm. it. It's therefore for the Congress to really introspect. I have tried all avenues. I have spoken to their leaders. Every session I am told come down the next session. Meanwhile, work has gone on. Mm. After all, this government has passed over 90 bills in the last two years. Mm. In the last session, I passed uh, 24 bills. The only one held up really amongst the significant legislation is, 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 is the GST. And therefore, uh, having been passed by the Lok Sabha, having been approved and supported by every Congress government mm. in the states, I think is enough is enough. And therefore, uh, uh, the Congress party should really, I would ideally like to do it with consensus. Mm. I will continue to discuss with them till the last moment. After mm. all, we are the government, it's our responsibility. Or otherwise, let the parliament process decide. That's a very important statement coming from you, Finance Minister. You're saying enough is enough as far as the GST negotiations are concerned. You will press ahead with the passage of the GST in I the will, I will, irrespective I, of whether the Congress comes I on think, board. I think uh, I will try till the last minute to convince them. In the course of the debate in the last session, I used the debate in the fin on the finance bill when they raised the objections to clarify what the government's mm. position is yes. and how unreasonable their own position was. Mm. And in fact, when I spoke against the kind of dispute redressal mechanism the Congress party was suggesting, I can tell you, if you go back to the video on television, every Congress, we member, live, every Congress member was supporting me by thumping his desk. That we don't want a dispute redressal mechanism headed by a judge. We want uh, 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 the GST's political mechanism, that's the council, to yes. resolve it. Now, if this is the real state of play, mm. then consensus is the preferred option mm. effort till the last minute will go on or ultimately let the parliamentary processes decide after all democracy is a game of numbers it is a game of numbers i'll come to the numbers in just a second sir but let me ask you if you were to ensure the passage of the bill in the Rajya Sabha in the next session then what is the realistic timeline that we could expect for the well, rollout because then it goes to state assemblies and so on and so forth you see this will go to the state assemblies thereafter there you need three supporting legislations mm -hmm which hopefully being taxation laws are money bills and those uh, two of them will have to be passed by parliament one will have to be passed by each of the states and then we have the whole year to pass them hmm. now fortunately gst is not a income tax law that it has to start on the first of april hmm. uh, it's a transactional tax hmm. So I think uh, then the GST council itself can adopt any date when it puts it into uh, so process. So what, what could be the realistic target, I don't sir? Think, I mean, I if you're saying April 1 is not sacrosanct. I don't want to count my chickens uh, ahead Before, of time. No, I, I get that. But still, sir, because you, know, you, you obviously know what is the readiness on the administration point of view the, as the, well. We are in a complete state of readiness. Uh, the moment the constitutional amendment is passed, it can go to the state assemblies. And we'll immediately have the three legislations uh, uh, before the GST council. Okay, so that's a big headline that's come in uh, from you there as far as the GST is concerned. There were several important issues that you made in your comment there. So one, of course, has to do with this issue of money bill and whether the government, which has been criticized by the Congress party, that the government is trying to subvert the parliamentary procedure by trying to push bills like the Aadhaar bill through the money bill route. I also want to talk to you about the criticism that the government has come in for from the Supreme Court of India on handling the drought situation. The Supreme Court has accused states of adopting an ostrich-like uh, attitude. It's also accused the state government uh, or the central government of not playing its part and now it believes that the center the buck must stop with you when it comes to drought mitigation you very clearly stated in Parliament that uh, that the framework of the executive is under threat by constant sort of comments and directives that the Supreme see, Court is first issuing. Of, first of all let me 
answer a question which you haven't asked. I firmly believe that the Aadhaar bill is exclusively a textbook example of a money bill. Article 110 clearly defines a money bill. This was debated in parliament and Congress had no argument to offer. This bill only says that if you want the benefit of mm -hmm. government money or subsidy, produce your identity. Mm. And how that identity is to be given is procedural. Now coming to the issue of drought, drought management is a governmental function. Mm. It's an executive function. There are no judicially measurable standards anywhere in the world mm. how droughts are to be managed. The management of the drought and helping the drought areas is also a matter of a legislative support. State governments on the ground handle it. And a legislative mechanism is that the state governments have the state disaster relief fund right. for which monies are provided. You have the national disaster relief fund for which monies are provided. They are approved in the budgets. They are approved in the appropriation bills. Now, you can have judicial review mm. if governments don't perform their duty. Now, governments by and large within the resources sanctioned by the legislature try and do their best. Governments are more accountable to the people. Can you ever have a situation in a democracy that an elected government of any political party says, mm. I am indifferent to the suffering people in a drought. No government will be able to survive for a day. And therefore, we must have faith in the elected governments. If there are some gaps left somewhere, mm. the gaps can be pointed out, the governments will perform. But I don't think, and I made this statement in the context, it's for Parliament through appropriation bills and budgets to approve the funding. So is this a case of judicial overreach, you think? Well, I don't want to make a... Co Supreme Court has the prerogative of making comments on us. We don't have that prerogative. Let's be clear. And therefore, I won't fall into that trap. India can't have two budgets, one made by Parliament and one made outside. Mm. And therefore, every money that we spend must be money which is sanctioned by parliament. That's the constitutional scheme. Okay. Since we're talking about money and we're talking about government resources, so let me also ask you about the status as far as the Seventh Pay Commission is concerned. Uh, the Empowered Committee of Secretaries is meant to give their report and their recommendations. Uh, the rollout plan, I believe, is 1st of July, if my memory serves me uh, accurately. What can we expect well, on that I front? Think, I think the Secretary's Committee will give its report. It will be considered by the Cabinet. And then we'll announce it. I can't speculate ahead of uh, schedule as to what is. But is it happen. likely to be significantly lower than what the seventh well, commission make, had anticipated? I, I won't. I won't make any comment. Uh, 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 I don't think there is any reason for anybody to speculate that at the moment. Okay. I also want to ask you about another issue, sir, which gets talked about very often, and I, I won't take a, uh, more than a couple of minutes with you on the issue of Suti, sir. Uh, the, the logic or the reasoning that the government was continuing to hold its stake in companies like LNT, ITC, etc., was that LNT has strategic interest because it's in the defense business and so on and so forth, and ITC because it's a homegrown company, a uh, homegrown brand. Why should we allow the possibility of a takeover? At least this is what one has heard uh, in the past. Uh, does that continue to hold reason? Well, these are arguments which are given. And at a time if the government decides to divest any company, Suti or otherwise, it will factor in all these arguments. After all, these are not arguments that the government has given. These are arguments which various stakeholders and opinion makers give on both sides, for and against. For instance, the argument for would be, uh, uh, why does government need to hold uh, shares in a company which is predominantly dealing in cigarettes mm. and some other products? Mm. The argument against would be, if there is a professionally managed Indian company which has developed, uh, 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 why should government uh, step out? These are all arguments which are given. Whenever this comes up on the agenda table, the government will factor in all arguments and take an appropriate decision. I know I'm out of time, so let me ask you about what the expectation is now on the 19th. Uh, that's going to be the big day. Uh, exit polls have shown a certain kind of picture emerging for well, crucial states I, like I, Assam. I, I, what is your take and how will that change the arithmetic for the BJP? You see, as far as BJP is concerned, our interest in this election is predominantly to try and form a government in Assam 
and make our presence felt in the assemblies in West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. My own assessment is we should be able to make some presence felt in these three states and do quite well in Assam, maybe form a government. In Kerala, particularly after Karnataka, that's the second state in the south that we are eyeing. Andhra, of course, in alliance with the TDP. But uh, Kerala is the second state, and I see a, a multiple-time uh, improvement in the vote share of the BJP in Kerala this mm -hmm. time. Now, how that vote Trans share translates, translates into, into seats, seats is a separate matter. All right, Mr. Jaitley, we will uh, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for articulating what we can expect. And the big headline coming in from this interview, enough is enough on GST. You would want the Congress's support, but you're going to go ahead with the GST irrespective of that. Thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.